the X-37B. What is NASA and the U.S. Air Force uh, doing with that? What have they been doing with that after 200 days in space? Number one, it's checking out other countries' space. It's a maneuverable, highly maneuverable vehicle. Satellites aren't that maneuverable and they run out of fuel rather quickly. But this vehicle is very maneuverable. So it's going point to point to point to point, taking a very close, literally, look at other countries' defensive satellites and possibly offensive satellites. That's coming, as we know. That's number one. Number two, it's experimenting with concepts of placing offensive weapons in space. Directed energy weapons, high-powered microwave, and experimenting with that. What are the immediate uses for something like that? Well, here you are parked next to a satellite studying it using material sig intelligence signatures, not x-rays and introscopy as the Russians, the word the Russians use uh, for non-destructive non testing, the, the, the Russian word introscopy. Looking at this particular space vehicle to see if it's a threat to you or if it's an intel collector, how effective is it, those kinds of things. You're taking your time doing that. And then at the same time, you could say, okay, if we wanted to take this particular vehicle out, let's say it was an offensive weapon and not just a, a, a camera platform. If we wanted to take it out, what would be the best thing to use? Well, at that range, high power microwave, that's a nice thing. Uh, directed energy weapon, particle beam weapon, that's a whole lot heavier, but yeah, maybe we could bring that into space too. By the way, while we're on the subject of uh, particle beam weapons, you guys, Space, you think, based upon the media and what you're reading, is the high ground, the next high ground for war. It's not. It's an intermediate high ground. The high ground for war in space is the moon. A limb, you want to place a directive energy weapon. I'm talking about a particle beam weapon now. That's on the moon that can shoot down not only anything in space, but anything it's looking at on the face of the planet Earth. We're talking about a death ray, a particle beam weapon. But you don't want to put it on the bright side of the moon, the Earth-facing side of the moon, because it's vulnerable to destruction. <clears throat> you want to put it on the limb of the moon. So it can have a beam director, a celestat, that can pop up like a periscope, turn, fire, and pop back down, just like you know, a submarine a, a periscope. Then, it's in a definite position, very much more difficult to take out than, than something that's on the surface, the Earth-facing surface of the moon, because now you've got you to come around the corner and then down, uh, which those weapons will happen in the end. But that's the high ground, and don't you think for a minute that the US, Russia, and China don't know this. That's the goal. It's secret, but I'm telling you right now, it's only logical, and that's the goal. In the, in the interim, war in, war in space, yeah, battles in space. The X-37B, uh, I mean, that would be, at this juncture, would be my, my best candidate for this space shuttle-like vehicle that gets forced down. It's my best candidate. I never expected other vehicles like the space, I didn't expect the space shuttle program to be shut down. When it was shut down, and the kill shot hadn't occurred. We had to go back to the drawing board and say, hey, look, there's another space shuttle-like vehicle up there. In fact, there's a couple. So we realized then that we were uh, premature, oh, thank goodness, because uh, that, that gave us time, or at least my family and I, and my, uh, my clients time to move and prepare, get in sanctuary locations.